subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has made certain objects blessed. He has made certain people blessed. He has made certain timings blessed. And he has made certain acts and certain places blessed as well. Allah is the one who decides what is blessed. For example, Allah has made the Quran a blessed book. He has made the masjids, all of the masjids, blessed places. He has made the 10 days of Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan, and the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah and other timings, blessed times, and so on and so forth. As, Allah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Al khayru kulluhu bi yadayk. O Allah, all good is in your hands. Which means that Allah is the one who decides what is good and what is not. And Allah says in the Quran, Surah Ali Imran, verse 73, Qul inna al fadla bi yadillah. All good is in Allah's hands. All good is in Allah's hands. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides what is blessed and what is not blessed. Therefore, to seek blessings, when we want to, when we want to seek blessings, it must be done according to those objects that Allah has made blessed. To seek blessings from other objects then shows that you are claiming that Allah is not the one who gives out blessings. Since all good is in Allah's hands, since Allah decides what is blessed and what is holy and what is not, then if we want to seek blessings, we must go to those places or use those timings or those objects that Allah has told us or the Prophet ﷺ has told us are blessed objects. The Kaaba, for example. And the black stone, the Prophet ﷺ would kiss the black stone. He would kiss the black stone. Therefore, the black stone is a blessed object and we should go and kiss it. It is an act of worship to kiss the black stone. But why? Because the Prophet ﷺ did so and told us to do so. As Umar ibn al-Khattab, the famous companion and the second Khalifa after the Prophet ﷺ's death, he said, when he kissed the black stone, he announced in front of everyone, he said, Black stone, oh black stone, I know that you are just a rock. I know that you are just a rock. You cannot benefit me or harm me. And had it not been for the fact that I saw the Prophet ﷺ kiss you, I would not have kissed you. The only reason I'm kissing you is because the Prophet ﷺ kissed you. Therefore, I'm seeking blessings from what the Prophet ﷺ did. There's also a beautiful hadith which shows you the dangers of seeking blessings from other than uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if you can give me uh, Sunan al-Tirmidhi volume 4. And remember al-Tirmidhi is Muhammad ibn Isa ibn Surah al-Tirmidhi. He was one of the students of Imam al-Bukhari as well. So was Imam Muslim and so was Imam al-Tirmidhi. And one of the differences between al-Tirmidhi and Muslim is that al-Tirmidhi, he does narrate from Imam al-Bukhari in many places in his book. And in fact, he, he also brings some of the comments of Imam al-Bukhari as well. He will tell you Imam al-Bukhari said this hadith is authentic or he said this hadith is not authentic. Another uh, good aspect of, of Sunan al-Tirmidhi is that after every single hadith, Imam al-Tirmidhi gives you his own opinion about it. This hadith is authentic. This hadith is slightly weak. This hadith is so and so. So this is a very important book and it is one of the source books of our religion. In a hadith, in hadith number 2180, Abu Waqin al Laythi, one of the companions, narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went out to Hunayn, the battle of Hunayn, and he passed by a tree that the pagans would use, and this tree was called Thatu Anwat. Thatu Anwat. That was the name of the tree. Thatu Anwat. They would place their swords and their arrows and their bows. They would place it upon this tree before going into battle. Why? To get good luck, blessings. That's what we said, blessings, right? To get good luck. So when the companions saw this tree, they said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, make for us a dhatu anwat, just like they have a dhatu anwat. Make for us a blessed tree, just like they have a blessed tree. So they are asking for blessings from some object other than what Allah has told them to seek blessings from. This is the point. They were asking for some blessings from an object that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not commanded them to seek blessings from. Neither had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa allowed them to seek blessings from. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa heard this, he said, Subhanallah. Allah is exalted and glorified above what you are doing. Subhanallah. And then he said, You have asked me, just like the children of Israel asked Musa to make for them a god. 
Now, this is in reference to the story of the children of Israel when they passed by an idol-worshipping nation and they saw the idol. They said, O Musa, make for us a god like they have a god. This is what the Jews did uh, when they were uh, traveling with Musa. Once they asked Musa to make a god for, for them. So obviously Musa became angry with them and explained to them the foolishness of their ways. But the, the point here is that the Prophet wasallam compared the act that the Sahaba asked him to do with, with the Bani Israel when they asked to make an idol. Showing you that to seek blessings from something other than what Allah or His Messenger has commanded you to do is an act of shirk. Because you are claiming that another object, another being, has the capability of blessing something. Someone might ask, by the way, what do you mean blessing something? Blessing means that more good will come out of it. Good luck, if you like, will come out of it. This is a blessing. For example, if a plate of food is blessed, then instead of feeding one person, it is going to feed two, three, or four. If a timing is blessed, then is, instead of doing a small amount of work, you will be able to do a lot of work in that time. So blessings mean you will get more good out of that thing than usual. You will be able to get more good than usual. So when the Sahaba asked the Prophet ﷺ for this, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is exalted, meaning Allah is above this. It is not befitting Allah that you are doing this. Verily you have asked me, like the children of Israel, the Jews asked Musa to build a god for them. So he compared the seeking of blessings to asking for another god, showing you that it is not allowed, it is impermissible to seek blessings from other than the objects that, or the timings or the places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger has told us. In yet another case of this, uh, if you can have me tafsir ibn Kathir, in yet another example, in Surah Al-Najm verse 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Have you seen Allat and Al-Uzza? Allat and Al-Uzza, Jazakallah khair brother. Allat and Al-Uzza, Allah is asking the Muslims, Have you seen Allat and Al-Uzza? Allat is the name of an idol that the mushrikun or the pagans would worship. And it was stationed uh, outside of Ta'if, the city of Ta'if, which is in present day Arabia. Ibn Kathir gives you the history of Allat. He said that Allat was the name of a person who used to feed the pilgrims food. Allat was a person, a human being. When the pilgrims would come, and remember we said that, the pre-Islamic Arabs would practice the Hajj. Because of Ibrahim السلام, the tradition was handed down. So they would go for Hajj. So this person, Allat, he would do some good deeds. He would feed the pilgrims food, a very good type of food. When he died, they built a monument over his grave. And they put a rock and they stationed people around it to protect it and to uh, worship it. So people would visit this and seek blessings from it. And so this became an idol, Allat. By the time the Prophet ﷺ uh, came, Allat was an idol, a physical idol. What was the basis of this idol? Seeking blessings. It was supposedly a holy man, a pious saint, Allat. When he died, they built a monument over his grave, and that became more and more uh, holy and more and more blessed, supposedly. People would come from far away, make dua there, seek blessings from it, touch it. So this became an act of worship and it became a major center of shirk. Showing you that seeking blessings must only, can only be done through objects, times, places, substances that the Sharia, the Islamic law allows for us. To seek blessings from other than these things is a type of shirk. Because you are claiming that these beings then have the blessings that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to give. Unfortunately, we find this act very common amongst many Muslims of today. They will go to graves, mausoleums, saints, living or dead, and they will touch their graves, or they will tie a string to it, or they will do objects or acts to these graves, thinking that they're getting blessings, good luck. So they're going to go to this supposedly grave of a holy saint, and he might have been a holy saint while he was alive. But after he is dead, he is dead. So they go to the grave of the saint and they tie something or they wipe their cloth or their hands or they rub their hands. They might even prostrate, do sajda. And then they go back with this piece of cloth and they say this is a holy cloth because it touched the grave of the saint. 
This is what I mean by tabarruk, barakah. They have made the graves of these saints into modern day lats. Just like the old Arabs had their lat, so too, so many of the people of today, they have made so many lats in this manner. And yet this is a manifestation of shirk. Even if this is done with a living person, you cannot seek blessings through living people as well. Only the Prophet wasallam was of such a stature, a high status, that blessings could be sought from his body. That is why the Sahaba, that is why the companions, they would seek blessings from the Prophet wasallam, from his body, from his clothes, from the wudu, the ablution. When he would perform ablution, they would take the water that he used and they would splash it on their eyes and face. Because the Prophet wasallam, was the most blessed of the creation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the Sahaba to do this and the Prophet وسلم, allowed them to do this. But the same seeking of blessings cannot be done to any other person. What is the proof for this? Well, who is the best person after the Prophet وسلم? Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and on and on, all of the companions radiallahu anhum ajma'in. After the Prophet وسلم, died, None of the companions went to Abu Bakr to seek blessings from him. And after Abu Bakr died, none of the companions went to Umar to seek blessings from him. In fact, none of the students of the companions, those who never saw the Prophet wasallam, none of them went to the companions to seek blessings. Never is it reported that they would go to the companions, touch their bodies, take their, or try, try to take their beards or their rings or something and, and get blessings from their body. They will do no. Because the companions understood that the level of the Prophet wasallam is not like the level of Abu Bakr or any other person. Yes, the Prophet wasallam it is allowed to seek blessings from his body. But now that he has passed away, it is we cannot do anything now except make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with the shafa'ah, the intercession of the Prophet wasallam. So to seek blessings from anyone's grave, from any saint, dead or alive, from any person is a type of shirk because blessings can only be sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from what Allah has allowed us to do. To conclude today's talk, sacrificing animals or performing vows or seeking blessings, all of these acts can only be done for the sake of Allah and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed. To direct these acts of worship to other than Allah is a type of shirk. We hope to see you next time. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ooh.